Hey, what's up guys? I'm Andrew. And I'm Christopher with Balahack Airsoft. And this is a last minute discussion video about Operation Fenrick, which is happening this Friday and Saturday. So that's the 11th and the 12th. Um, so that's the 11th and the 12th. Indeed. It's this time. Yeah. It's happening. <laughs> All right, so what is Operation Fenrath? Operation Fenrath is the realization of what I've always wanted to do as a Milsim event. You have blue four players, you know, <laughs> the quote unquote good guys fighting against op four, the bad guys. And that way you can create a greater sense of immersion um, and a greater sense of realism. In other words, you, the op four is not like, I know they're coming in the door, I'm just gonna blast their face off. Instead, there's a little bit of role playing, a little bit of acting involved to make it more realistic. The most unique thing about Fenrath that we're doing is utilizing multiple AOs for this event. And as far as you know, what does that look like? Um, well, we have several vehicles rented. Um, we're gonna be transporting the different units or platoons, if you will, to the different locations. And the different locations are, are varied as far as the terrain, different from Battlehack Airsoft Field the Balahack Airsoft Field is going to be in play for the event. But overall, I think it's just going to give us an opportunity to play airsoft in places, you know, local to us that we've just never been able to play on before. Yeah. How cool do you think the sites are? Uh, so we did last weekend. Last weekend, we went to all the sites, did kind of a dry run, and just looking at them and seeing how, you know, things could play out or might play out. They're pretty cool, I think. Utilizing the different AOs would be cool enough, even if they were just different areas, but the actual areas themselves have a lot of cool terrain features and a lot of cool opportunities for patrolling, you know, cool firefights and just new and exciting terrain to play our stuff on. Someone described it to me as this is how raids are actually performed. I mean, we're going to be operating out of the barn as the Ford operating base. The basic scenario revolves around there's this potential biological threat to the United States. And so we're actually here in Chesapeake, Virginia, and that's where everything's going down. A couple bodies were found on the Northwest River, and one of the first responders basically died within 48 hours after having seizures. They found chemical components in the person, in one of the bodies that they found, and Homeland Security, FBI got involved. They brought this team together from Washington, this JTTF, Joint Terrorism Task Force, and they're borrowing local assets from Little Creek, and that's what our unit is pretending to be in this scenario. Local law enforcement has evacuated all of the local civilians like out of their homes, and they're trying to keep it as hush-hush as possible, and perform these operations on these possible insurgents that are operating out of the swamp, as well as these other locations, and or, you know, is it domestic terrorism? Is it a foreign country? Is it, who are these people? What's going on? What level is the threat? So we're basically like law enforcement on drugs, like super high speed, trying to roll in and figure out this whole situation. One of the cooler things about this event, as a lot of you probably already know, our regular World Conflict event series uh, are two fictional nations that we made up, Rosvad, which is kind of like a Russian analog, uh, and then Enduro, which is kind of like a UN slash US analog, fighting it out over these fictional countries. This is the first event we've done in, I think, well, at least in a long time, that we're actually using, like, this event is set in Chesapeake, Virginia. You know, we have real, you know, we're imitating real, agencies or units um, and kind of more in a real world situation, which is just kind of playing in with the the Milsim uh, vibe of this event, trying to be a little bit more serious than we would be with Ross, Bad, and Endura. Because with fictional countries, I think there's a little bit more room for, for silliness and for kind of made up stuff. Absolutely, and that, I mean, that's what we're known for though, is the, the like silly fun stuff. You're playing a video game in real life. That's why we do our Wild West events, zombie events, yeah. revelations, post-apocalypse, all that kind of stuff. But this, I, I wanted to do something different. I didn't want to just do, hey, this is a, you know, Milsim event, and you, you have this huge AO, which huge AOs are absolutely awesome. Um, and we've, we've got some, but um, I wanted to do it to where 
you're traveling from site to site. I basically want it to be a customized mission where you're hitting places back to back to back to back, going on different raids, um, acting on intel that you've been given, performing SSE, collecting intel, and then pulling back to FOB and going on the next hit, uh, which is what we've successfully prepared for. I mean, it's crazy. I finished the 28 different missions. There's 28 customized missions, which is going to be pretty awesome. And there's seven different phases for the four platoons, if you will, and the op four know exactly what's going on. We're utilizing a ton of props and everything. But I think that the biggest factor is you're going into a target. You don't know what it looks like. It's a fresh area. You don't know what the enemies really look like. You don't really know how many there are. And you're trying to accomplish an objective as a group, which is going to be awesome. One of the things to help us do this is the Friday portion of the event. Friday is a mandatory part of this event. It is kind of the training portion. Some people have said, oh, it's just training. I don't need to be there. You're going to be fighting there as well. You're going to be training. You're going to be doing force on force drills. You'll be playing airsoft too. It's like its own event. Yeah. The event actually starts Friday for Blue 4. Everyone needs to be on site here at noon. They're going to be doing their check-in, waivers, medical cards, everything like that. And we're splitting it up into different training sectors. So the players will be going over um, close quarters combat, individual weapons handling, mount, land warfare, and then basically special purpose training like prisoner handling, SSE, some work with vehicles and things like that, which I'm really excited about. The main reason that we're doing that, other than that it's going to be fun uh, and that it's going to be challenging for everyone is unit cohesion so that the team, the, the platoons are like, okay, we know how we're operating together. We have standard operating procedures. We know how we're going to do it. And we're, this isn't like a, this is the best way to do it, that we have some very qualified people training. Yeah. This is a, this is how we're doing it together. Because two people doing their best way that are completely different is the wrong way. <laughs> so sure. when we're actually loading up in vehicles, kitted out and going from site to site, uh, we need our people to be completely on point. Um, we can't afford any mistakes. The other thing is the pacing of this event. If someone's not ready um, to load up in the convoy, they have to be left behind. Yeah. We can't afford to wait for someone. That's fine. They're going to you know, pick back up on the next phase or they'll just be put on guard duty. The actual FOB is in play. People can be attacked at the FOB itself, which is kind of a cool, cool feature. So yeah, like Christopher said, as far as op tempo goes, you know, if a player is not ready to go on a phase, uh, they will be left behind um, at the FOB. Uh, but that kind of plays more into the, the event as a whole um, because we're working with, with smaller units on larger unknown AOs to most people. Mm -hmm. um, it's really going to be down to the individual player to basically give their all so we can accomplish whatever mission set that we're on. You know, when we're working with groups, you know, like 10, 12, 15, 20, that small of a group, every person makes a difference in how the mission is going to turn out. So if we have a group of 15 and, you know, five of them are not putting out, you know, 100% or they're not, you know, ready to go, that's going to make a big difference in what we can accomplish. And, um, possibly have a negative outcome on the mission. But I think that's kind of cool because, you know, on, a, on an event where you have 500 people, if you have a mass wave charge, you're probably going to be able to take yeah. an objective. But if you have 15 dudes or 10 dudes that have to go, you know, to a 50-acre property and patrol to contact and to secure an objective, et cetera, um, that makes a big difference and it feels cooler knowing that you actually were a part of what was accomplished instead of just... I mean, in some events, you can just kind of stand in the background and be like, oh, yeah. there they go. They're going to take that objective. I'm going to stand here and chill out. Every individual absolutely counts in this event. So we actually have a small amount of people attending the event, and it's lower than we would like, but it's kind of the perfect numbers for pulling off the event properly for the individual to mm -hmm. give them the most. There is absolutely guaranteed action and pressure on every Blue 4 member. And there's guaranteed action and pressure on each Op 4 member yeah. um, throughout this. Now, there's so many phases that even if one goes terribly wrong, you're still hopping into these other phases. But one of the cool parts is that these phases, Blue 4 can actually fail them when yeah. they go to a site. I mean, if they don't have their stuff together, 
it's it, it can go very poorly and their platoon leader is going to be like we are combat and effective yeah you guys suck <laughs> not really <laughs> but like we we got to roll out of here like we you you could not accomplish this so the pressure is going to be on but we're designing it to where it's going to be you know an absolute quality and engaging experience yeah. so yeah. the smaller amount of people the better in this situation it will literally be like you're that video game in Call of Duty with that small squad doing all this crazy cool stuff because we've created something that's customized for the individual for them. Yeah. There are no marshals at this event. Um, the people in charge of the people are the command staff. So a platoon leader or platoon sergeant, um, they are in charge. If someone is out of line, they will have to eject the person from the event. We can't afford to just lollygag around. At the same time, we're not going to be taking it way too seriously um, because this is just airsoft. It's just a fun game. Mm -hmm. We're just doing a different version of it than I've ever seen done. And there's some just big factors like moving around tons of people with multiple convoys yeah. is a serious deal. So you can't mess around with that, especially going to these different sites. And people need to have their, their stuff together because some of these sites, you know, have challenging or dangerous terrain true the, the people in charge are the people playing to be in charge in the military aspect but IRL um, so just keep that in mind can't believe you just said IRL so uh, guys one of the tasks that the command staff will have is to inspect blue four players at check-in on Friday uh, and that's mainly to make sure that uh, the kit requirements are being upheld um, this is I think the first event in several years, yeah? Yeah, the first event in several years where we've actually had pretty strict kit requirements. Um, so for Blue 4, you do need to have a full set of multicam, so a multicam combat shirt or field shirt, uh, multicam field pants or combat pants or BDU pants, what have you. Uh, as far as gear goes, gear color does not matter as long as it's not black. We don't allow black yeah. helmets or chest rigs or plate carriers. Um, I would personally suggest that you have a plate carrier and some kind of chest rig or load bearing vest. Depending on the mission set, um, you may want to have more of a recce or reconnaissance loadout. So that is up to the individual. And even though you know it's a smaller event, uh, we are still trying to have that continuity where everyone is looking the same, um, just so that we can have that immersion factor as far as being a, a cohesive unit. Uh, as far as weapon systems go for Blue 4, uh, we're pretty much just looking at uh, modern NATO weapons, um, so like M4s, you know, M4A1s, Mark 18s, 249s, 240 Bravos, uh, MP5, stuff like that. As far as like the kind of more historical guns or the, like the crazy, wacky, like space guns you can get, um, that's the kind of stuff that we're not going to be uh, allowing. In, in all reality, if you are coming to this event, you've already bought a ticket um, for Blue 4 or Op 4, uh, you should have read the tax op. Uh, which is available on our website and the Facebook event page. Yep. Uh, and the TaxOp version 2.0 was updated a couple weeks ago, so there's a few changes from the original version if you read that. Um, but the one thing we can really say with questions about gear um, in the final days before the event, just read the TaxOp. It has everything listed in there as far as what's suggested, what's allowed, what's required, um, and base your, base your kit off of that, and you should have no problems at all. Yeah, you need to make sure that you like read the uh, the actual like kit list and that you have everything that you need. At Balahack, we really generally create an environment that anyone can come and enjoy. Um, this event is 18 and up, that's already limiting yeah. right there. Mm -hmm. The kit requirements are pretty limiting. Uh, the fact that you need to be able to have food for yourself and be completely sustainable. Um, it's mid caps only. There's all kinds of things like that. So, but we don't care if, you know, it's small. If, if someone's trying to be an exception for this event, we're not going to squeeze it in. Yeah. Um, we, we care more about the experience of the people who are like-minded and trying to accomplish something completely new and different and pull off a different style of event. That being said, so Friday's training, yeah. Saturday kicks off super early in the morning. I mean, Op 4 need to be out here by 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. um, because they have to get briefed separately. They have to be split. They have to be move to different AOs, they need to have vehicles or be able to hop in a vehicle with another Op 4 member because they will be changing AOs at a certain point in the day. Yeah. Um, Blue 4 just needs to make sure that everything on their person 
and their pack is like good to go. They will be able to stage some gear here at the FOB, mm -hmm. but really you should have your gear ready to absolutely rock and roll uh, for the event. And uh, that night, so after we have all of these crazy missions, uh, Saturday night on the 12th, we're going to have a cookout. Um, so the field's buying a bunch of hot dogs and burgers and stuff. And we're just going to have a grand time as we do kind of an AAR and cover how it was and what people liked and what people didn't like. And Sunday is standard gameplay. Yep. Um, and it's free as part of the event. So people basically get three days out of this event. Camping is allowed for Blue Four and Op Four if they want to show up Friday night, probably at around seven or eight o'clock. Um, they can park in the area that we'll be directing everyone. And camping's free out here. Um, that Friday night, we're doing an optional movie, like I had said, and then camping is allowed Saturday night. People just gotta be packed up by 8 a.m. for um, gameplay on Sunday. Yeah. So I think all in all, those who are participating are just going to get an absolutely incredible experience. Yeah, it's going to be, I think, it's going to be un unlike anything we've ever done. And I don't know, you know, I don't know it's possible. I don't know of any other Airsoft event organizer that's done an event like this. I mean, some people have, are, are setting up or have set up multi-AO events, but not like this, yeah. where you're staging out of this loading into these convoys the way that we're doing it yeah. and hitting it and you never hit the same site back to back it's just a very aggressive pace it is it's going to be high op tempo and mm -hmm. you know if you're a regular battle hack player and you've played a world conflict before um, there's not going to be a time really where where you're going to have a lot of downtime like at a world conflict if you need an hour long break you can take an hour long break but if you do that at this event you're really going to be missing out on what you paid for, which is the high op tempo, going to the different areas, <clears throat> the different mission sets and objectives, and the small unit tactics that we're going to be, you know, learning on Friday yeah. and then putting into place on Saturday. Yeah, your R and R at this event is like transit in a yes. con in a convoy, or like, like fifteen minutes. Quick, hydrate, eat a snack. I mean, the the furthest site is like eighteen minutes away. So that's some downtime that you've got there. Otherwise, you've got to be Johnny on the spot with that ammo up them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just be Johnny on the spot with um, with your reloads, with your your whatever you need to do. Oh. Changing kit for, for missions if you need to do that. Well, uh, that, that brings up a good point. Like, you are not allowed to bring loose ammo or ammo in speed loaders to other sites. Mm -hmm. um, you're allowed to have up to 10 uh, mid-cap magazines on you. It really is a lot. We're being rounds. very generous here. Um, but we will not accept people like reloading off-site. You can reload at the FOB, and that way it's basically just like a reset every single time. Yeah. Like, here we go. I've got what I've got. I have my responsibilities. Um, I know my chain of command. We know our orders. We're going into this. It's going to be challenging. It's going to be freaky. Adrenaline's going to get pumping, and let's rock and roll. Yeah. I think what I'm most excited about personally is Obviously, the Blue 4 Command and the Op 4 Command have worked together as far as, like, planning phases. But I don't know, as a platoon leader, what the Op 4 are going to be doing on any specific mission. So, it'll be interesting for me, you know, knowing the general flow of the event, but not really knowing specifically what's going to happen at each AO or each mission. And kind of how we may have to interact with people, whether they, you know, come up unarmed or they come up armed but not hostile. It's like, yeah. you know, how are we supposed to to handle it. Are we actually going to accidentally going to shoot like a Chesapeake farmer that uh, didn't <laughs> evacuate or something? No, we're not going to do that. Just cut it out. Um, <laughs> oh, that's staying in. <laughs> um, that's from Full House. Full House, they would always be like, cut it out. They There's a, uh, a, a full uh, new Full House. Yeah, I don't believe in that. It's against my religion. It's, it's called like Fuller House or something. So, by the way, guys, if you guys like this like long form kind of discussion, Kind of like almost podcasty vibe. You should leave a comment um, under the video so that Christopher can be convinced that Swampcast should be a thing. Because mm -hmm. I think that podcasts are the way of the future, and the future is now, old man. So you guys should comment if you think it's cool just to have like videos where we discuss stuff. There you go. Uh, there will not be walk-ons for this oh, event. That's important. Yeah, there won't be walk-ons. We already have enough people to pull off the event properly. Yeah. Um, but tomorrow, Thursday is the last day where you can register. If you want to register as Blue 4, 
you can do it. It's $100. Remember, you get basically the three days out of it. You're going to get a custom Fenrate patch. You're going to get raffle tickets. You get the cookout, and you get the... Play free Sunday? Yeah, you get to play free Sunday. You get the whole experience. Um, it's like $33 a day. There you go. Uh, <laughs> Op 4 is $50. People are like, oh, Op 4, $50. We're calling them Op 4 because that's how it rolls. But Op 4 is going to get to destroy some people at this event. True. Um, they just have a disadvantage with numbers in most situations. Some um, Yeah. Other situations, it kind of switches up, which is going to be very cool. Um, as well as Blue 4... Uh, basically, the way their medic rules work is we're using training tourniquets, we are. Uh, very similar to what Milsom West does, Josh, does. Um, and then we're using medic water, so the exact same thing. Um, I'm very excited to see how this works, how it challenges the individuals. But yeah, you can go ahead and register as Blue 4 or Op 4. No, no. Op 4, you don't start till Saturday, but you must be there at 7 a.m. Like, yep. you have to. Uh, you can't, oh, sorry, I'm late, and the guys are, you know, in a different state. Which this is actually a multi-state event. Technically. Yeah. So it's not just happening in Virginia. It's going to be very cool. But yeah, the, that's, the, that's the general thing. Um, you the can, gist. Yeah. You can gather a lot of this from all the information out there. And this is very last minute. But to just kind of help prepare people, like, we are here to have fun. It's not super crazy. At the same time, once you step into it, you need to have the right mindset. This is not about who got more kills or whatnot. This is a highly challenging situation for the individuals, even the Op 4, because they have their own mission of, here's what we're trying to accomplish, this mm -hmm. realistic situation, which is really fun to do. I'm absolutely stoked. So if you're on board, guys, I can't wait to see you on Friday. Op 4, we'll see you guys on Saturday. If you're not on board yet, and you can hop on board, and you meet all of the requirements, just don't register for this event unless you've read through everything then go ahead and hop on board. We have some space and I can't wait to show you the media from this event and basically hear from all the individuals, like how was your experience and really dive into it. I believe that this is the beginning of something much, much bigger for Balahack and in a way for the airsoft industry, uh, just because of the way that we're doing this specific event. Mm, definitely. Yeah. Well guys, make sure to like and subscribe, Swamp Sniper, Balahack Airsoft, and yeah, the dog's asleep. He's not as crazy now. Yeah, thank you. But God. earlier, you guys will probably have seen him losing his mind. Share this video if you love Thanos. He really is. He really is tired. Okay, bye. All right, bye. I am the one who decides. That's like my new authoritarian saying. I am an inevitable hour-long thing. <laughs> Are you seeing this? He's like, he's ready to go. Thanos, I am the one who decides. Shh, calm. Shh, I'm going to bite you. I'm going to bite you.